in order for a tree to grow properly the tree needs to be pruned which is basically removing the those branches that are not desirable in a tree in order to make the tree grow the way you want the tree to grow to the height that you want and to the width that you want in a society it works the same way doesn't matter what size is the society if you want the society to grow better to become better you have to be able and willing to point out the shortcomings of a society and allow it so so in order to allow the uh, those positive points of the society to grow better and uh, remove the unwanted parts of the society again in order to do that you have to be able to be able and willing to point out the shortcomings and work against them works work to try to remove the shortcomings so if in in this case in this instance if I point out a few shortcomings that I see in the Zoroastrian community it's not because uh, I hate the Zoroastrian community no it's my community this is my community I like it to be growing and becoming better every day here is the subject I want to talk about today is the idea of self-loathing I see it amongst many Zoroastrians especially from Iran especially uh, Zoroastrians from Kerman which is my parents my, my family are from there I see a lot of self-loathing uh, self-loathing in a, in a means that they don't believe that they are worthy Zoroastrians of Kerman they, they have somehow lost their way they think uh, they are not not basically not not worthy the Muslims are better or these are better or those are better and basically the grass is green on the other side and this self-loathing results into uh, not treating yourself as well as your family as uh, as well as you should as well as your siblings your family your children uh, your spouses as well as you should because you you fucking don't believe in yourself uh, self have a self-loathing issue and this is basically the the work of a Muslim society around us in Iran that the more they keep repeating that we are the best we are the Muslims we are the last religion on earth and we are the best and we are this and we are that the more they say that they keep repeating that shit the the more self-loathing Zoroastrians feel that the, the other guy keeps saying we are the we are the best of everything because we're Muslims and so the the the, the result is the Zoroastrians who actually listen to, listen to this bullshit start actually thinking yeah maybe they're the best maybe we are we are shit and that's it can't be nothing farther from the fucking truth this can't be farther from the truth and in order to improve the society in order to treat the, your spouses better your children better your siblings better you have to stop the self-loathing self-loathing for what why do you see yourself less than the fucking Muslims have we killed as much as Muslims have we maimed slaughtered as much as Muslims do we marry six different wives like the Muslims do I have a brother-in-law who's a Muslim the fucking guy his father married two women at the same time in the same house he was fucking two women in the same house and he was a Muslim 
My this is the father of my brother-in-law. Yeah, my sister decided she wants to become a whore to a Muslim. But the idea is this. The idea is this self-loathing results into, okay, the other side is better than me. Uh, so I should somehow try to get close to the other side, to the Muslim side. I should try to, you know, marry maybe, have a couple of their children, uh, because to improve myself. Fuck them. They should become like us, not us like them. They should become, if, sh if, if, if the other side wants to be part of my family, the other side should convert to my way, because my way is the right way. And then get married. That, and that's the point. Stop the fucking self-loathing. Zoroastrians, especially Zoroastrians from the Kerman region of Iran, stop, stop the fucking self-loathing. You have nothing to be ashamed of. You have everything to be proud of. Fuck the Muslim, fuck the Shiites, fuck the Sunnis. Doesn't matter. If it's a Muslim, fuck them. That's it. There is nothing that Zoroastrians need to be ashamed of. Because here is the thing, folks. When the parents subliminally, subconsciously, have this self-loathing self problem, uh, they might not actually say it in so many words, but in their behavior, in their actions, they, they, they behave in this, this self-loathing manner. And then the result is the children, again, subconsciously, they get this message that we are not as good as them, we are not as good as the Muslims, so why not I become, try to become like the fucking Muslim? Why not I try to be friends with them? Why not I try to marry them? Why, do, why don't I try to suck their dick? Fuck them. Fuck the Muslims. You don't need to be like them. You're your own people. You have your own identity and it's a much, much better identity than a, than a fucking Muslim would ever have. So stop this self-loathing bullshit and uh, treat your children, your siblings, your spouses right. There is there is nothing that the um, there is nothing that the Muslims have that we can admire. Muslims, the only thing they have is numbers, and the only way they got the numbers is one, they force people to convert, which maybe we should in the future sometime, or and they uh, treated each other well. You see the Muslims, how they, once somebody becomes a Muslim, uh, they really treat each other well, as opposed to non-Muslims. I'm not saying they really treat each other well, as in terms of all the time they don't steal from each other. Oh, they do that all the time. No, as relative, as comparison to non-Muslims, they treat each other, Muslims treat each other much better. They will kill a non-Muslim. They will maim and slaughter a non-Muslim. They will cheat and steal from the non-Muslim. They will do that in a much lesser extent when they know the other side is a Muslim. So Zoroastrians, you, you have to understand that you have to treat each other a hundred times better than you treat any other people, Muslims, Christian, whatever the fuck they are. You have to understand you, you, to treat each other a hundred times better than you treat anybody else. Uh, here's an anecdote, uh, interesting anecdote regarding this matter of how Muslims treat other Muslims better than they treat non-Muslims. There is a there's an old story uh, in the Persian language which says there was this guy who liked to travel and learn and read and find new books in new cities and find new teachers in new cities so he really liked to learn but he didn't have the financial backing uh, to travel and learn see the world and learn so what he used to do 
while he was traveling in, in, inside the Muslim uh, Muslim city between the Muslim cities of Middle East North Africa as uh, so Southeast Asia while he was traveling through these routes uh, he used to once he re he would reach a new city he would declare to his uh, travel companions that last night I I'm, I'm all, all through the trip he will tell his companions his uh, travel companions that he's a Jewish or he's his Christian or whatever or Zoroastrian or whatever he would lie he was a Muslim but he would lie and say I'm, I'm Jewish I'm Christian or whatever the fuck and once they would reach the new city uh, the night before they enter the new city that he was aiming to stay for a couple of months uh, he would sleep uh, at night and wake up in the morning and say oh I saw uh, Muhammad last night in my sleep and he came to me and he told me to become a Muslim and uh, take Muslim Islam as my religion and here I am ready to accept Islam as my religion well he was Muslim all along he was just lying to saying that he's Christian or he's Jewish now why he was doing this is because the very next day they would enter the city and all his travel companion who are who were Muslims remember this is mostly Muslim cities or societies that he was traveling in uh, they would take him to the first mosque and take him to the the cleric in the mosque and say yeah this guy was all all through all trip during the past month or 20 days or whatever he was Jewish he was Christian he was telling us he was Jewish Christian now he's willing to take Islam and blah 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 all right say whatever you have to say to become a Muslim and he would say it and for the next month or two months the the clerk in the city and the rich people the rich Muslims in the city would treat him well very well give him a place to sleep give him food shelter um, and he would be living for a month or two free uh, for free with all this food and shelter and all of that and he would use that time to have access to the teachers and the books and whatever information that he was looking for in that city after a month or two they would say goodbye and everybody would leave happy and he would get on his way and go same thing different city a month later two months later Anyway, this idea is, I, 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 I told the story to explain that this is how Muslims treat when they, if they know the other side is Muslim and they want to, you know, give a good impression, they treat each other very well. This is how Zoroastrians are supposed to be treating each other. What I have seen, especially Zoroast from Zoroastrians, of Iranian origin especially of Kerman origin is that they have this issue of self-loathing and especially this results into their young their their children uh, to uh, take this as an issue that yeah we if, if we come we become Muslims or we marry a Muslim or we become have many Muslim friends we are sort of improving ourselves which is not the case fuck the Muslims you're not improving yourself but they are getting this message of self-loathing from their parents and this is an issue that needs to be addressed now here's the thing folks in in, in a perfect world I shouldn't be addressing these issues these issues should, should be addressed by uh, Zoroastrian priests Zoroastrian clerks Zoroastrian Mubeds but the problem that I've seen is that Zoroastrian Mubeds really don't want to get involved with anything they just want to you know stand in the corner and collect the whatever money you send them their way and that's it pray fuck this is this is not a, the way to guide a population guide a flock this is not the, the, the Zoroastrian priests have to get their act together I understand that traditionally this is the way Zoroastrian Mubed Zoroastrian priests 
have behaved, but this is not a way to keep a society together. If you're standing always aside, thinking yourself above and beyond everybody else in the flock, in your group, in your religion, in your sect, in your club, then you can't guide them. And this is what has happened, that this is what is happening. There is no central force, attraction, a, 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 a char charismatic priest or a charismatic priests with an S at the end to attract their Zoroastrians around themselves, guide them, know them. Here's what I don't understand, folks. Uh, I'm sure you guys have noticed this. Uh, every Christian church that you go to, the priest, after a family goes to this church for a couple of months, a year, two years, blah, blah, the, the priest actually, every time the service is over, the priest comes by the door, meets, meets each of, meets and shakes hands with each of the attendants at the, ser at the service, at the Christian service on Sunday morning or Wednesday night or whatever, whatever the fuck it is shakes their hand, gets to know them, finds out their name, where they live, becomes part of the fucking community, gets involved. And this is the way that the priest can leave a good impression on the youth of that population and guide them the way he wants to guide them, you know, to the right way, to the, our way, to our tradition, to our, you know, our club, welcome them to the club. The, the priests have this powerful, uh, have this power to guide the flock, bring the flock together, bring the group, the club, how, however you want to call them. This is not a question of God. This is the question of a community with a certain belief system which wants to stay a community, which, which sees a benefit in staying as a community. Here's the point, folks. A community is beneficial. Being part of a community is much better than being uh, alone, separate. And on top of that, being part of a small community, such as the Zoroastrian community, it is much, much better than being part of an extremely large community like Christian community where nobody really knows anybody. There's so, so many people, you lose count. But the way they have remedied that their numbers in Christian community is that each each church, each priest that who services a church and uh, performs the ceremonies on Sunday morning in every church, has this objective of becoming part of the community, getting involved with the community, learning people's names, where they come from, who they are, what did they do, what's their job. I've never come across this in the, in the Zoroastrian community. Uh, never have I, as a child, I, I, I lived in Tehran all my life, never as a child did any Zoroastrian mubed or priest ever approach me. It was like, ask me, like, what, what's your name? Uh, what are you doing here? What's your name? What family you're from? Where do you live? What do you do? What your father does? Uh, never, ever, ever. And this is really not a good thing because we are born into this group. I, I, I'm sure I'm sure the Muslims Muslim clerk is the same way in mosques the Muslim clerk really gets involved with their with his people with the people who attend the mosque wants to know them name where do they live what do they do how do they feel what are their concerns regarding their society what are their concerns regarding their religion, their society, their group, their sect? What are their concerns regarding their community, their environment, their... Everything. Part of being part of the community, that's what it means. To, to, in order to guide the community, you need to be part of the community. In order to be part of the community, you actually need to interact with the community. What, is hap what, has, what I've seen from the Zoroastrian priesthood, traditionally Zoroastrian Mubed, is never want to interact. It's like interaction is, is 
not necessary. As far as the Zoroastrian priesthood is concerned, interaction is not necessary. I pray to God, you come and pay me, I pray to God, that's about it. Oh, fuck you. This is not the way to uh, guide a group, guide a flock, keep the flock together, and uh, create a nice, positive environment. This is not the way to do it. So, uh, here I am, I'm making these videos because I feel I have, somebody has to speak up, but in reality, we should, these priests should be doing this already. They, they should be bringing their flock together, Zoroastrian priests, Zoroastrian Mubeds should be getting much, much, much more involved with the Zoroastrian community. Simple fact, just open up a couple of books, read how, how others do it, go to a couple of mosques, go to a couple of Christian churches, see how they are leading their flock, how they're getting involved with their community, and copy them. It's not that hard. That, that's how they have attracted so many people, and that's how their societies, relative to Zoroastrian society, is much more progressive. Progressive. Because the priest is not separate, is not se standing separate from its, his society, is getting involved. And once they get involved, they have to solve problems. And once they have to solve problems, they come up with new, they have to come up with new solutions. And this is what we call progress. When you have to come up with new solutions, because the problems are new and varied because the society moves on, the society is not stale. As the time passes, the society moves on and new problems arise through, through the advancement of society, industrially, culturally, socially, whatever, however you want to look at it. And then the priests, the, the religious leaders of this community, if they want to keep a community together, they have to be get involved and come up with new solutions for new problems. There is no question about it. Why they they're not doing this already? Beats me. It's a shame. They should start as soon as possible. Just get involved with your community. Start learning their names. Whoever comes to a temple, Zoroastrian temple, Oteshkede temple, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Start getting to know them, their names, what do they do, what family they're from. It's, it's the fucking priest's job. This is part of the job description. You have to get involved with your community. If you don't like people, if you don't like talking with people, if you don't like listening to people, you have no place being a Zoroastrian Mubed. It's not your place. Get the fuck out. This is a job for people of the people. Zoroastrian Mubeds, just like religious leader of all other religions, this is a people. The guy has to be people of the people. People for the people. A person who's open to people, likes people, likes to interact with them, likes to talk with them, likes to listen to them, and likes to solve their problems. If you're not in this business, if you don't like anything of that sort, you don't have any place in, in, in the Zoroastrian priesthood. Get the fuck out, get, a, get an, another job. Leave the space open for a Zoroastrian Mubed or a priest who actually wants to get involved in his community, wants to help out, wants to find solution, wants to get to know people, wants to learn their name, and wants to know how he can serve, how he can serve. Folks, here is another word. How he can serve. Zoroast Zoroastrian Mubeds and priests. This is the word you should be learning and repeating. You are there to serve your people. It's not the other way around. I understand in the caste system, which belonged to many th a thousand, two thousand years ago in Zoroastrian Iran, the Persian Empire, the Zoroastrian Persian Empire, the caste system, the king, the, the warrior sect, and the priest sect, and the merchant sect, and the farmer sect. 
the cast, cast, forecast. In that system, yeah, the people were there to serve you. The people were there to serve the, the farmers and the merchants, and even the warriors were there to serve the priest caste. But that's past. That's past. No longer. It's not natural. It's not going to go anywhere, that, that system. You have to understand, your position has changed. It's been a thousand years now that the priest is there to serve the people. Serve the people's needs. If you don't get in line, you're going to lose your society slowly but surely. The priests of every religion, including the Zoroastrian religion, are there to serve the people, not the, not the other way around. This is not a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago. The people are not there to serve the priest caste. The priests are there to serve the people. If you don't like serving the people, get the fuck out.